This episode of Other People's Airplanes is supported by Piper and Sennheiser. It's day five of EAA's AirVenture Oshkosh 2011, and we are back to ConocoPhillips Plaza next to the one and only Boeing 787 Dreamliner. I'm David Allen, and I'm about to bring you back along for the ride. So today, again, we're back here at ConocoPhillips Plaza. We're standing in front of this gorgeous 787, and we're about to go inside for a tour. So uh, let's go check out this behemoth. So on board the 787, this is the, the Dreamliner. I've caught up with Lori with Boeing, and we are... Uh, just amazed at the, at the at this airplane. I mean, it's, it's it's not finished, but it's still on flight test. But it's just a massive airplane inside. It is. This airplane inside is about the size of a 767, but it's actually wider, and it gives people more space. So it'll have the same number of passengers, but be more comfortable for passengers. So when you say the 767, you know, I, and I think of the 767 and the 777 as those long haul, uh, those those big bus routes right. that, that have so, lots of people. And you also have this, the the tr the 737 and and the and the 717 for the shorter routes for the smaller people. What niche does this airplane fill? The 787 is absolutely unique in that it's the passenger count of a 767, but the range of a 777. So there's more than 400 cities uh, that people want to fly directly between. You know, that, that thought of connecting flights and having to get off one airplane and get on another is not something passengers enjoy. So with the 787 for the first time, distant cities can be connected directly, even if they're mid-sized cities, instead of having to go through a hub. What kind of innovations have gone into this airplane that make it absolutely unique from other airplanes? 787 has innovation in it from the nose to the tail. You can see it on the outside. You can see the aerodynamic innovations. But inside, the part you can't see is actually where most of the innovation is. The advanced systems in this airplane, the way that the information moves around the airplane, passengers will never see it, and we don't want them to have to even think about it. Uh, we test these airplanes to be sure that they are ready to go into revenue service, and we're winding up that test effort now. What passengers will see are bigger windows, They'll see large bins for their bags. They'll see wider aisles. They'll see wide seats. There's innovative lighting in 787s that help us simulate a day cycle. So when you're on a long trip, that's really important to helping you reset your body clock. So instead of waking up to shades being lifted and lights being on full blast, we can simulate a sunrise, gently wake you up, and get you accustomed to the new time zone that you're entering. Also, these big windows, they're not on this airplane because it's a test airplane, but they have electrochromatic shades. So if you love to fly, you don't have to be the guy who peeks under the shade and floods the cabin with light. It's kind of like those sunglasses that dim. You can still see out of them, but it's not going to flood the cabin with light. This is too cool. Lots of neat stuff going on here with this airplane. Thank you so much, Lori. Let's see if we can't go find ourselves one of the test pilots. Okay, we're coming into the cockpit here. This thing is beautiful. Your name, Michael Sinnott, you're one of the pilots? I'm, I'm the chief engineer of the program. Can you tell me what it's like to fly this airplane? It is, uh, it's a joy, it's peaceful, it's smooth, and this is the quietest cockpit in the industry. That sounds fantastic. Great for the pilots and for the passengers. That's right, that's right, yep. The, uh, the 6,000 foot cabin is an awesome thing. So we're up at 43,000 cruising, the, the cabin altitude is 6,000, and you feel just great. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Damon, and I'm joined today by Major Dan Butler of the United States Marine Corps. How are you doing today, sir? Doing great. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about the aircraft behind us. It's the T-6B uh, Texan II. We use it for primary training, training uh, Navy, Marine Corps, uh, Coast Guard, and Air Force pilots down in northwestern Florida, Pensacola. What's uh, going on with this paint job? It's a throwback to the old uh, World War II type air trainers, 100 years of, na of naval aviation, so they wanted to make it, you know, traditional. So they painted it all yellow, make it look like the old trainers. I've heard that this aircraft has a few nicknames. Can you share those with us? Uh, SpongeBob and uh, Yellowbird and uh, Texan II. Wonderful. What's it like to fly this aircraft? 
it's a lot of fun. It's got uh, a lot of horsepower. The old uh, the plane that it's replacing had 425 shaft horsepower, weighed about 4,000 pounds. This one has 1,100 and weighs about uh, 6,500 pounds. So you got a lot more thrust, a lot more power. Much more capable plane. It's got fully digital cockpit, fully glass, everything. It's got a heads-up display. Uh, great power, great performance. It could be a great trainer for follow-on pilots. Get them used to the, the HUD concept early on in their training. And how'd you get your start in aviation? I enlisted back in uh, San Diego, and I started fixing helicopters for the Marine Corps. And after about three years, I was going to school nights and ended up ended up getting my degree and uh, applying for a pilot slot. They gave me a pilot slot, and here I am. Flew C-130s on the West Coast for about six years, and then now I'm just a trainer. And your favorite thing about your job? Uh, coming to places like this and getting paid to do it. Uh, burning Navy gas is always a lot of fun. I pretty much fly twice a day, every day, for free. And uh, it's really enjoyable, a lot of fun. Well, thank you for your time, sir. I'm Damon Favor, and that's your 100 Seconds. We've made our way over to between buildings, uh, hangars A and C, so Alpha and Charlie, and I ran into, finally got, you're, you're not an easy guy to catch up with, finally got to catch up with Rob Riggin of Flying High Coffee. Rob, thanks for taking the time to talk to us here at Oshkosh 2011. Well, it's my pleasure, and if you want to be uh, a busy guy, serve 25,000 cups of coffee at Oshkosh, because I can tell you one thing, it's not nearly enough. It's not nearly enough, I'm sure. Well, not with half a million people here. I don't know how many there are, but those are the, those are the projections. Lots yeah. of people here. And what do pilots do? They drink coffee, right? No doubt about that. Big time. So tell me a little bit about what you do, Flying High Coffee. Why are you different? Flying High Coffee is uh, basically built to be aviation's coffee from the ground up. There's a couple of challenges that we have in aviation, and I saw a coffee as a potential solution to those challenges. We do have challenges. Tell us what you do with the proceeds. Well, a portion of the proceeds are being directed to be streams of revenue for uh, aviation nonprofit entities. And I'm focusing right now on very small nonprofits because they have particular challenges when it comes to getting uh, financing and funding. So let's think about this. People, pilots, drink coffee, you sell coffee, and you take some of the pro proceeds and put them back into aviation programs. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, for example, if we were to just look at the uh, pilot population of 600,000 people, if you take really any segment in, in America, 78% uh, are coffee drinkers. 54% uh, of any segment are habitual coffee drinkers like me and you, which need about means we drink about three plus cups a day. So if you were able to take just a nickel from each of just that little segment of aviation and contribute it to charity, you would generate $20 million annually. So I think we're into some big bucks here. $20 million for, for aviation programs. Love it. think it's fantastic. Where can people find more information about this? Uh, they can go to the website. It's at www.flyinghighcoffee.com. Uh, there's contact information on there. Uh, I'm ready and open to talk about uh, deals with coffee or ideas for using this for fundraising or, or what have you. But um, I think the most important thing is that we get this coffee out there and that when we make a choice for coffee and aviation, that we make a choice for aviation and buy Flying High Coffee. Not to mention the fact that it's really good coffee. I didn't even have time to mention that, did I? <laughs> it is good coffee. I've had plenty of it, so make sure you check it out. Go to flyinghighcoffee.com. Thanks, Rob, for taking the time to join us here. You. Thank you very much. All right, we just finished walking through this, this jet, and y you guys know that, you know, GA is kind of where it's at for me, but this, this, this Dreamliner has the potential to really kind of bring back some of that magic of flying. Neat innovations, which you've already heard about. Uh, just a fun plane to fly. The pilots seem to think so. The passengers are going to enjoy it just as much. And can't wait to see where Boeing takes it. In the meantime, thanks for tuning in. We're going to catch, uh, catch you later on. Uh, we'll probably get some day six stuff out. If you want to follow me on Twitter, because lots of stuff happening, so stay tuned. Twitter.com forward slash Dave Flies, D-A-V-E-F-L-Y-S. Also, make sure you're following Damon at Twitter.com slash Pilot Damon. And finally, please jump on our Facebook page and leave us a comment. That's Facebook.com slash Other People's Airplanes. We'll catch you tomorrow. Say goodbye. Bye. It's day five of EAA's Air Adventure Oshkosh, and somebody's going to jump right in front of me. It's... happens a lot at Oshkosh.
Yeah, because that helped, right? 